So as I was working on this sermon, I had an idea that was too late for the bulletin, and that was a, a sense of, of punctuation of some praise language that I think fit into where I was going with the words that I was saying. And so I'm asking Rachel to help me and to speak on your behalf. If I had think in the head well enough, it would have been in the bulletin, and then you all could have been doing this together, but um, the thought came later than sooner on that schedule of printing. So... Rachel is going to um, say some words on behalf of all of you, and as she does that, I want you to be uh, raising a hand or opening a heart and having that be something that is coming from you as well as, as she says those words. These are words of praise and thanksgiving to God. Today is Stewardship Sunday, and I think perhaps the best place to anchor ourselves as we uh, get into a conversation about that is uh, praise of God. So let's begin. We praise you, Lord God, raising our voices in adoration. Glory be unto you. You have shared with us so many blessings. We are thankful. Let our stewardship give generous expression to our gratitude. Mm -hmm. Jesus challenges us to put our hearts upon things that are eternal and not physical and limited. The Thomas Fire reminded me a couple years ago of this insight from Jesus. And as, as we left the home in the early morning with the uh, smoke surrounding us, so it was as thick as a fog and and flames uh, literally three houses away on the hillside. We were aware that we might not be coming back to that house and that we were leaving in that house uh, some keepsakes, some things that, um, that we treasured. We have a rocker that we call the cricket because as you, as you go in it, it goes cricket, cricket, cricket makes that little sound, a little cricket sound. My mother was nursed in that rocker. We figure it's, at least as far as we know, 200 years old. We have a, uh, a bookcase in, in my study which my mom's father uh, used when he was a young man that is now in my possession. I, I admired him. He was a mechanical engineer, but he did a lot of reading, and he was always asking me about philosophical things, probing me, getting me to play chess when I was seven years old. And, and I was more of a sports guy than a reader in those days, but Pop Pop, uh, I love him dearly. That bookcase is at least 150 years old. And I don't know if some of you are old enough to remember, but there was a time in American education when shop class actually built stuff. <laughs> and my dad actually built a desk. Three drawers like a dresser with a lid that opened up with all these little cabinets that you stick things. He did that in junior high school. And I have, the, I have the great good fortune to have that. I, I figure that's at least 100 years old. All of this we were running away from, thinking that we would never see again. We were glad to be alive. We were in shock, yet we were grateful for life. And we were giving, we were being given an opportunity to have our heads screwed on straight a little bit better again with perspective about what is treasure. Some of you had exactly those same feelings that I'm describing just last year with the Wolseley fire. Some of you sitting here were not as fortunate as the Dilges and lost some very precious things. How many of you have felt your anxiety go up just with the wind? 
before the fires even started, right? Uh. So last summer I had a lot of fun, or Debbie and I had a lot of fun. We went east, we went to visit our grandson Archer. We happened to see our son and daughter-in-law at the same time. <laughs> it was an extra bonus that went along with it. Um, they're, they're up in New Hampshire, and so we, we stayed there. And then on the way to the airport in Boston, we spent a, a night outside of Boston. And being the English teacher that she is, we had to go to Walden Pond. It is one of those uh, places that you go and pay respect if you're an English teacher. And so we went to that. We had the great fun of whacking at mosquitoes and black flies as we walked around the lake to try to find the place where Henry David had his cabin. And it was a good experience. And it got me to be thinking, well, it's been a lifetime almost since I've read Walden Pond. Maybe I ought to read that again. And so um, I did. I got, I got a copy of the book, annotated copy of the book. Decided fall would be the perfect time to read it. Why would that be? I don't know, but it seemed like it wasn't a summer book. So I'm reading it now. And the first chapter is called Economy. And he talks a lot about how we misplace our lives and our spirit by carrying around the stuff, the physical stuff of life. that getting caught up with all this stuff can actually deaden the spirit. Now, that's, that's pretty good for a transcendentalist, don't you think? He kind of caught on to Jesus a little bit there and is saying stuff that wise for us to think about as well. We can't all quite be like Thoreau and go live by the pond in a rectangular little shoe box with three chairs, a table, you know, he, he lists it out. Not very much stuff. But we know there's wisdom in what Jesus is saying. We know that there's wisdom in what Thoreau was trying to get across. I don't know if you are like me, but a number of you are not and would not like George Carlin as a comic. <laughs> you, you would say he's a little offensive. He, he uses some words that you'd rather not have me mention that he uses, whether I was here in the pulpit or not. But in his, in his time, he, he had some really great routines, I thought. And um, I loved him because he would, he would just kind of pick up a word and then riffed on this word for a while. And... What I thought of was how he had this routine about stuff. Do you remember that? He had this routine about stuff, how, you know, how we humans like to collect our stuff, right? And then and we, we rent apartments, and then we buy homes to put our stuff in, and we, and we get more stuff to put in our homes, and we get bigger homes for more of the stuff, and we're just getting stuff in there, and we end up renting places for our extra stuff because we just can't have enough stuff. How much stuff is enough stuff? How much stuff do we really need to have? Do, do we want to aspire to be like Thoreau and have just like five things? Or do we think it's okay to have four homes and a trailer unit that is storing stuff, too, that we don't even remember what's in there anymore. Where is the, the right place for stuff? We've been getting ready for grandson Archer's arrival. He arrived last night. That's why Meredith and Ryan weren't at the gala with the rest of us, because they were on uh, LAX taxi service. Archer's arrival has meant that we've had to move a lot of stuff around <laughs> at, the, at the Dilch household. You know, when he was here last time, he, he uh, well, it was a little bigger than that basket, uh, but he was not that ambulatory, you know, he didn't need all that much 
room or that much other stuff for him to do his thing. But now he's two and a half, and uh, he's all over the place already. So we had to throw some stuff out. We, we have a child room now that, uh, that doesn't need a double bed or that chair or that lamp. It's a Steffo lamp. We thought that was really a classy lamp. Oh, nope, that's out. Three file cabinets, it's out. Stuff had to go. <laughs> stuff had to go. And we had to get some stuff. We, we had to get a high chair. He's got one at the other grandparents. He's got one at his house. Well, he needs one now at the age he is in our house. So we had to get a high chair, and we had to get a crib. I'll tell you sometime about the crib story, the, the, how it needed four efforts <laughs> <laughs> to actually get completed correctly. <laughs> I won't tell you who was doing the work at the time, but sometimes I wonder about myself. <laughs> How did I get this far in life? All this stuff, we started to treasure before he even showed up, because there's that little crib in the room. It looks so nice. And, you know, in the high chair, and we're starting to go, oh, without him even being there, we're starting to feel this way. We're starting to treasure this stuff. But the truth of it, this stuff means nothing. The birch, the popular, whatever it is, it, it's Archer, isn't it? It's Archer that gives that any value at all to us. And it's really Archer who we're valuing, not the stuff. The stuff is just signs of what it is we treasure. Our scripture calls us to, to run a check on where we place our hearts. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus says, where is your heart? It will reveal where your treasure is. What is it that you treasure? That will reveal where your heart truly is. We praise you, Lord God raising our voices in adoration. Glory be unto you. You have shared with us so many blessings. We are thankful. Let our stewardship give generous expression to our gratitude. Jesus recognized that people had a tension, a tension between things of this life and the things of eternal life. And he wanted to help them store up for themselves things that had eternal value rather than losing sight of those eternally valued things by getting caught up in the stuff of this life. Our experiences, I think, of giving and receiving love is one of those eternal things that we need to make sure our stuff doesn't get in the way of. There's a marvelous commercial. I've got to confess, I don't know really how I saw it. Nowadays, um, there's all these, what do you call them, Rachel? Platforms. There's all these platforms on which you can see things. I thought maybe it was on TV, but um, maybe it wasn't. It's this guy, he's looking through a newspaper. He's thinking about getting his dream car. I drove up in my uh, 1992 Miata this morning. I've been relegated to the uh, antique. My dream car. I'm thinking this guy is looking through the paper for that Miata. Who wouldn't? First or second year model of the Miata? Treasure. Yet, his son comes to him and says, can you take care, I forget her name, 
but it's his granddaughter. There's something going on. The granddaughter needs to stay with grandpa to get through college. I'm thinking it is. And the commercial has that happen. And, and then grandpa is giving the granddaughter a set of keys. And she goes, granddad, what, what about your dream car? Right? And he says, well, you having a car is my dream. You know, go and live kind of a thing. One of our families here in the church just recently uh, extended connection, lost a young adult. A uh, young adult died. In our community, we remember that just a year ago, almost a year ago to the week, we lost 12 in our community, didn't we? Do we need to be reminded of the value of loved ones in our lives? We know it, don't we? We deeply grieve their passing if that happens. We cherish our moments with them, every one that we can capture and hold on to. We know that their lives and our love relationship with them was worth any car or any other stuff we might be tempted to treasure. We know this, don't we? And I would venture to guess that most any of us here this morning would say that we would sacrifice, well, most anything for the well-being of a loved one. We invest in them because we treasure them. We know that they hold our hearts and we try our best to hold their hearts. And when we've been too long out of their presence and then reunite, the power of that emotion is astounding. Me coming around the corner this morning and Archer going, pop, 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 pop. It's like, oh. <laughs> it's almost palpable love, isn't it? It's almost palpable. Jesus is right. We do indeed treasure what and who surrounds our hearts. We give our hearts to. And he would say to us, folks, have that be people. Have that be God. Don't fall for the trap of having it be stuff. Rust comes, the thief acts, the fire rages, the floods destroy, and all that stuff becomes debris. And Jesus says, make it things of the Spirit that you treasure. Make it things of the Spirit that you have your heart go out to and surround and prize and love. We praise you, Lord God, raising our voices in adoration. Glory be unto you. You have shared with us so many blessings. We are thankful. Let our stewardship give generous expression to our gratitude. Amen. So for some of you, I've been really personal already, haven't I? But I need to say to you this morning that your church needs for you, your church family needs for you to act upon your affection 
for it this fall. You know, when we look around at one another, most of us would include one another here among those we would go a second mile to help. Perhaps even we would do this sacrificially. Our heart goes out to our church family that is celebrating its 50th anniversary. Our heart goes out to one another. We treasure each other. What we have been and what we will be for one another. We have gone through a, uh, a spasm, I'm calling it, this fall, and we have suffered the consequences of people who were not so dearly connected to us, uh, leaving us. How could they disconnect? We ask one another. We're family. How could they walk away from the family over this issue of who we're going to have be a part of the larger family? They have their reasons. They have their reasons. We say... We have our reasons for staying. We have our reasons, and it has to do with the love of God that we have experienced in this place that has touched our hearts and perhaps even saved and transformed our lives in this place with these people. We have our reasons. It has to do with God, and it has to do with our love of one another. We were here at our children's births. Weren't many of you. We taught Sunday school to each other's kids. We put up with 95 degree weather and did VBS and pizzazz for those kids year after year after 25 some years. We helped each other handle our children's adolescent challenges. Some of us needed more help than others. We joined in the well-wishing crowds at graduations. Didn't we do that with each other? At weddings. And God knows that we've sat with each other in recovery rooms. We've sat with each other at deathbeds, at mortuaries, at funerals. We have lived a life of the heart with each other. We have cried together a little bit or maybe a lot and we have laughed together a little bit and I hope a lot. And that's why we're still here. And we think it's God's doing. And so we offer Thanks to God. We praise you, Lord God, raising our voices in adoration. Glory be unto you. You have shared with us so many blessings. We are thankful. Let our stewardship give generous expression to our gratitude. 
So today is Stewardship Sunday, and we're being asked to extend our generosity to our church family, to share it with the people that we love. We're being asked to do it in a spirit that honors our past, celebrates our 50 years together, that maintains our present, that we may do the things that we've become accustomed to doing with each other, for each other, for our community, and even boldly starts to assert the fact that maybe there is something else that we would do in the community tomorrow. We are being asked to give significantly to our congregation to weather the impact of this spasm. And to assure that these ministries that we have come to rely on will continue to be provided. And everybody needs to step up and step forward in their stewardship to meet the challenge that is before us. We are being asked to believe in our future that God is not done with us yet. We are being asked to invest in our future that we might thrive as we have been a thriving congregation in the past. We are asked to give generously so that people who are hungering and thirsting after holiness and righteousness might find it here like you and I have found it here. We're being asked to give generously so that people who are seeking to set a course for a better life might find colleagues here who will help them along that way, might find generous and caring friends who would help them feel family is walking with them along their way. We ask you to do this kind of sacrificial giving for all the right reasons. To do it as a sign of where your heart rests. To do it as a sign of what it is that you treasure. We praise you, Lord God, raising our voices in adoration. Glory be unto you. You have shared with us so many blessings. We are thankful. Let our stewardship give generous expression to our gratitude. Amen. Amen. Amen.